Hey you guys, welcome to another episode of Dancer's Corner, sponsored by Dancewear Corner, filmed in the corner of my boyfriend's apartment. Okay, today we're going to be talking about levels. Ah! Also, Milo's here. Um, you guys, levels I mean like ballet one, jazz two, hip hop three, contemporary 4.5 and a half. Um, you guys, levels can cause so much stress, so much pressure, so much drama. You feel just tense. Like when the new dance year comes, you're like, oh my God, am I going to move up? Am I going to stay in the same level? Am I going to go down a level? These numbers create so much chaos and I am here to tell you that it's going to be okay. First of all, if you hear chewing in the background, Milo's chewing on a dinosaur that I bought him. Not a real life dinosaur, a chew toy dinosaur. Um, you guys, I, I every dancer experiences this where you're like, you get separated from maybe your friends when you go into levels or like different genres, you're at a higher level and another genre you're in level one. Um, and that's okay, it's totally normal. Everyone progresses at different rates and it's not better or worse, it's just specific to your journey and your progress. So this happened to me in college. Um, I started in ballet one, every freshman starts in ballet one, college level of course, and then the second semester I got bumped to ballet two with my friends, and then the second year came around, I got bumped to ballet three, and then my senior year came around and everyone got bumped to ballet four, and I was the only one who stayed in ballet three. Um, I naturally was super upset, you know, I was like, what did I do? Like, I'm not good enough. I, whatever, I was, I was crying. I, you know, was sitting on the step by myself. I was embarrassed. I was like, well, this sucks. Literally everybody moved up and I'm the solo woman over here in ballet three. But what I didn't realize is that it was a much better choice for me and I'll tell you why. So at the end of the day, you guys, levels don't mean much. It's kind of the equivalent of social media numbers. Like, congratulations, you have 3,000 million people following you. It doesn't mean anything. There's phenomenal artists out there who have like 200 followers. And then there's people out there who have millions of followers and they're not putting out as quality of content. Um, it's, it's truly just a superficial phenomenon where you're like, ooh, that person's better because they have higher numbers. It's the same thing with levels. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything. The quality of work that you're putting in in class, that's what means something. The quality of teacher that you have, that's what means something. So remember that numbers really are just numbers. And I know it sucks. You're like, okay, well, all my friends are going to this level and I'm going to be in uh, the other studio in the lower level. Um, you have to remember that it's just a number and it's specific to your path. So ballet four was not a good option for me because I had a lot of injuries and I needed to continue working on certain technical skills that would have fallen to the wayside if I had gone to a higher level. So it would have stopped my progress. So going off of that, I wrote that sometimes a higher level can impact your learning. So say you bump to a higher level because you just feel like you should, but you weren't quite ready. You're going to be focusing on keeping up. What you're not going to be focusing on is improving upon what you already have. So you're going to be like, oh my God, this class is moving so fast. You're going to be focusing on picking up choreo. You're going to be focusing on just trying to keep up with everyone in the class and maintain kind of the same level as them. And then at the end of class, you're going to be like, oh my God, I didn't work on anything, anything valuable. You didn't work on your turnout, on your, you know, physical strength, your artistry, picking up choreography quickly. All you were trying to do was keep up. And if you're in class trying to just keep up, all of your technique and the foundational stuff that you've laid in your lower levels is just gonna be forgotten about and you're not gonna get any better. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Just because it's a higher level doesn't mean that you're going to improve. You might actually have leaps and bounds, no pun intended, leaps and bounds better improvement in a lower level because you already are at that level 
and you can work on getting better as opposed to jumping all the way up to this level and just trying to keep up. The most important thing is to just, just trust that you are in the correct level. Usually your teachers who are people like me, we, we know what we're doing. We're putting you in a level for a specific reason. And if you're at a good studio, you're with a good teacher, they should be able to explain to you like, hey, Sarah, the reason that I'm keeping you in Lyrical 2 is because of this, 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 and this. If you can improve upon all these things, I'll move you up over time. There should always be a line of communication there because if you don't know why you're at a level, how are you gonna get any better? You need to have an open channel of speaking with your teacher to know what to work on um, and how to get better, right? Communicate so that you can continue working up. Another option, you guys, that I've given a lot of dancers that are on the kind of cusp, you know, someone who's moving from a ballet two to a three, but I'm like, ah, they're, they're not quite there yet, is to take both levels. If you're able to take your lower level, your foundational level with the higher one, that's incredible. So that's another thing that you can maybe ask your teacher or your studio director or your dance coach, whoever, um, if you can take both at the same time, that way you're getting the foundational work, the ability to continue building on what you have laid, plus the extra challenge and a little bit of a higher level and class and like information being given to you. Oh my goodness, that sweet spot in between, that is ideal. Also, let me just tell you something right now. When you get into the real world, <laughs> meaning out of your studio, um, out of college dance programs, whatever, it doesn't matter. It literally does not matter. Auditions and, and programs, they don't ask for your levels. You know, if you graduate from high school or whatever and you want to go to a college program, they're not going to say, what level did you take at dance movement arts in California you know they're not gonna ask that they're gonna say hey do you know how to dance can you show us right now how beautiful you are and that's what's most important um, so try not to stress too too much it's kind of like grades with school um, when you apply for jobs and whatnot they'll ask for your degree they'll ask for your highest degree but they're not gonna say hey what grade did you get in um, senior year civics or uh, AP US history? Like, it, it just becomes irrelevant at one point and what you can offer at that exact moment becomes more important. Um, so just know that numbers over time fade and they really don't hold a lot of weight um, if you want to pursue dance as a, as a career. I wrote to just let go of, of numbers and evaluate your attitude and your progress. Um, attitude meaning, are you sulking in class? Are you upset that you're in, in that class? Are you focusing on the negatives and, and what you maybe aren't too happy about? Or are you making the best of the situation you've been given? Are you making the best out of the class you've been so lucky to be taking? Are you making the best out of the teacher that has all of this knowledge to bestow upon you? Um, or are you having a bad attitude about it? I'm gonna give you guys some tough love right now. I've, I've had dancers who I've kept at a certain level and they have just had a sour attitude the whole year. And guess what? They didn't improve. Their attendance went down. They kind of just stopped trying because they didn't get what they wanted. And I've had dancers who have taken that opportunity to be like okay I'm gonna improve so much this year I'm gonna show you Miss Ati great they came out on top which is the most incredible thing to watch is seeing someone thrive in the environment you put them in so take a moment and be honest with yourself how are you experiencing class make sure that you have a good attitude and make sure that you are in a growth mindset meaning that you are in the mentality of wanting to improve and being open-minded to the space and the and the opportunities that you've been given. Our quote of the day. Sorry, <laughs> Milo's looking at me weird. 
Um, don't wait for opportunity, create it. That is um, very simple. Don't, you guys, don't be one of those people who's like, oh, when I get to this level, then I'll be happy. Oh, when I get to this class, then I'll be a good dancer. No, you can do that right now, bucko. You can be happy now and you can be a phenomenal dancer right now in the levels and the classes that you're in, but you need to create that for yourself. Another one that I like is bloom where you are planted. Um, the grass is always greener on the other side mentality is just a, that's a dead end, my friends. You're always like, oh, well, that class is probably so much better. That teacher is so much better. Those students are so much better to dance with. Guess what? Everything has good, everything has bad. And that includes the classes and the places that you are right now. So find the good in everything and make the experience amazing for yourself. You're in charge of it. So it is what you make it. Thank you so much, my beautiful people. Look at this little tail. Look at it. Look at it. <gasps> you guys, this is my life. Puppies and YouTube. I love you so very much. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Dancewear Corner. You guys, I have the... I have the promo code uh, AT20 at checkout for dancewearcorner.com. I'll see you guys later.